Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with another video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, I'll be explaining exactly what put options are. Now I will say if you are brand, brand new to options, I recommend you first watch my what are options video. I'll drop a link to that one in the description of this video because that video will give you a great overview of just generally what options are and the best way to actually go about understanding them. And once you're done watching that one, you can get back to this one and continue forward. And lastly, before we begin, I do wanna say, as always, if you are interested right now in learning on an in-depth level about options, options trading, stock market investing, and all that good stuff, please check out my courses on Skillshare. I've been teaching on that platform for over a year at this point, and Skillshare is very similar to YouTube, except the content on that platform is geared solely towards the purpose of education in the form of online classes. And in those courses, you will see a lot of the very detailed research and analysis that I have done using real stock market data, spreadsheets, graphs, and even computer programs that I have written to help simulate and demonstrate the various concepts that you'll be learning. And I provided some links to some of the more introductory courses of mine in the description of this video. Now, one thing to note is you will need a premium subscription to the Skillshare platform to watch my courses. But if you do sign up for that kind of membership with the links provided in the description of this video, you will get an absolutely free two week trial and you can watch all my courses during that time for free. And then after your trial has ended, it's literally gonna cost you a few dollars a month to maintain that membership. And if you just decide you don't like it, you can cancel before your trial has ended and you won't lose a dime. So please check out those links and join the other thousands of students that have already taken my classes. And so now getting into the core content of this video and starting off here with a bit of a recap, and a lot of this will come from the what are options video that I recommended you watch first in the beginning of this one, but options essentially are a form of stock insurance, just like you would consider car insurance. And of course, the reason why you have car insurance, right, is so that you don't actually have to cover the costs of any damage to your vehicle if you were to get into an accident. And options work in the same way, except obviously they only apply to your various stock positions in your investing or trading account. So for example, if you have some losing positions in your account, you can use options or stock insurance basically to recuperate all those losses and cover all the damage essentially. And put options specifically are gonna help you in the very common scenario where if you bought shares of some company and the share price decreased from where you bought it, put options are gonna be useful in recuperating losses in that kind of scenario. And so if you did wanna buy a put option or some stock insurance on some of your stock positions that you may have to prevent losses from the stock prices actually going down, then the first thing you would wanna do is select an expiration date on the put option that you'd wanna buy. Right, all options do have an expiration date and there's a whole spectrum of expirations you can choose from. Some options expire in as soon as a week, some expire in a month, six months, a year, or even more. And so essentially the expiration date you would choose would basically correlate or correspond to how long you would want to actually protect those stock positions that you may have. And then the next thing you would do is select a strike price for the particular put option that you'd wanna buy within the expiration cycle that you have chosen. And this strike price is very important because this is the price at which you are going to be trading stock with the option seller, the person who sold you that contract on the expiration date, right? And so specifically, put options are a contract. They're an agreement between the buyer and the seller of that contract where by the expiration date, the buyer of the contract has the right or has the option to sell 100 shares of a particular stock to the option seller. And like I said, the actual price at which those 100 shares are going to be sold from the put option buyer to the put option seller is the actual strike price of that contract. And so this is where put options really start to act like stock insurance because by expiration, depending on where the actual stock price is trading relative to the strike price of that contract, the put option buyer, right, the purchaser of that insurance may or may not need the insurance. Right, the whole point of buying a put option is to protect yourself from losing money if the stock price actually moves down from where you bought it. But if that doesn't happen, if the stock price continues to increase from where you purchased it, you won't need that stock insurance. That put option will just expire worthless and it will be gone. And so now to make all this stuff a lot more concrete, we're gonna hop over to my computer and I'll walk you through some examples. All right, welcome to my trading platform here. This is the Thinkorswim trading platform owned by TD Ameritrade. And so the examples I'll be walking you through here are gonna to have to do with the stock called AAL, which is just American Airlines. And so let's say here I am bullish on American Airlines stock. This is one of the many stocks that is still depressed after the coronavirus pandemic 
shock hit full force. You know, if you recall from back in February and March of 2020, the stock market crashed by over 35% or by around 35%, and American Airlines definitely went down along with it. And it still has a long way to go to actually recover and get back to the price levels where it was before the coronavirus pandemic. So like I said, as a result, perhaps I am bullish on American Airlines. I think the stock is going to eventually climb higher and higher and higher as the economy recovers from COVID. And so let's say, for example, I bought 100 shares of AAL. And just to make the math a bit easier, let's say I did so when the stock was trading at exactly $16. So just round this number up to 16. And so if I bought 100 shares at a price of 16 bucks per share, that would cost $1,600. And so then right after I did this, or right after I do this, I can also buy a put option, buy some stock insurance to prevent losses from occurring if I am wrong and American Airlines actually continues to go further down in price. And so now if I go to the trade tab here, this is the option chain where you can buy or sell options on American Airlines. And so like I said earlier, the first thing I wanna do is pick an expiration date. All these options here are sorted by their actual expiration dates starting from the earliest expiring options in only five days, and they extend all the way currently to January 20th of the year 2023. So a very wide spectrum of expiration dates I could be choosing. And so let's say I wanna buy this stock and hold this position for about one month, so around 30 days or so. So in that case, I could choose the options expiring on February 19th, 2021, which as of today's recording is 33 days away from today. So that's right around a month. I'll unfold this tab here. And so now on the right hand side, these are all the put options that expire on February 19th. And so now that I've selected my expiration cycle, I can now choose my strike price. This column right here shows you all the available strikes for all the different put options I could be buying. And so the key here is if I wanted to buy stock insurance that would cover all of my losses in the sense that if I bought American Airlines at a price of 16, if the stock drops in price by even one penny, which of these put options is going to allow me to recuperate even that small, tiny little loss? And the answer to that is going to be buying the 16 strike put option right here. And again, if you recall, the strike price is the price at which the shares of stock, in this case, American Airlines, are actually going to be traded at by the expiration day. And specifically with put options, since I am buying this contract, since I'm the purchaser of this stock insurance, this put option gives me the right or the option to sell my 100 shares of American Airlines that I bought first in this example, it gives me the option to sell those shares at a price of $16 per share by the expiration date. And in particular, I'll be selling those shares to the option seller, the person who sold me this contract, that is the person to whom I will be selling these 100 shares to if I actually wanted to use my insurance. And so now continuing our example, I bought my 100 shares, I bought the 16 strike put option, and now fast forwarding 33 days by expiration, let's say I'm totally wrong in my assumption on American Airlines and the stock actually drops from 16, which is where I bought it, all the way down to maybe $10 per share. And so if you were to just look at my stock position alone, ignoring the option for a second, if I bought 100 shares at 16 and the price drops down to 10, I would lose $6 per share, right? Times 100 shares, that would be a loss of $600. But fortunately, I have this 16 strike put option that will allow me to recuperate and make back that full $600. And that's because again, this option gives me the right to sell my 100 shares at a price of 16 bucks per share, which is the exact price at where I bought them to begin with. So even though by the expiration date, American Airlines is only trading at $10 per share in this example, if I initially bought them for 16 bucks per share, and I can still sell them back at a price of 16, then I don't make or lose any money. I simply get to walk away from this entire position with a scratch, or I should say very, very close to a scratch. And that's because the money I had to pay initially to buy this option, you can see the bid price is $136, the asking price is 140. So going right in between, let's say $138 is the fair price to buy or sell this contract. So if I bought this put for $138, that money is never coming back. That is simply the cost of this stock insurance. And this payment of 138 bucks goes directly to the option seller. So in reality, in the situation where American Airlines drops from 16 down to 10, this put option allows me to make back the full 600 bucks, but I still lose $138 from initially buying this contract in the first place. 
So in the end, walking away with only a $138 loss, as opposed to a $600 loss, I think we can all agree that one of those two situations is definitely much, much better. In the case where you actually bought the stock insurance and you only lost what you paid for it, that is a much better outcome than not having bought the insurance at all. And so one other thing I want to mention here is that with options, there's always going to be a winner and there's always going to be a loser. In our example here where the stock actually dropped in price and the put option buyer, myself, actually used the option to recuperate my losses, in this case, I am the winner. I made back all my losses. The full 600 bucks that I technically lost on just my stock position alone is all made back thanks to this option. But where does that 600 bucks come from? It can't just be spontaneously created. That $600 has to come from the option seller. If by the expiration day, I'm able to sell my 100 shares of American Airlines stock to the option seller, the person who sold me this contract in the first place. If I'm able to sell my shares at a price of 16 bucks per share, that means when the option seller receives those shares after they've paid for it at a price of 16, if they don't want to actually keep those shares in their portfolio, they could of course just sell them back into the market and get rid of them, but they would have to do so at the actual current market trading price. And in our example, the current market trading price was only $10 per share. So if I'm the option seller here for a second, I had to buy 100 shares of American Airlines at a price of 16, and then to get rid of them, I have to sell them at only a price of $10 per share. And so that would be a loss of $6 per share times the 100 shares. That means the option seller loses that 600 bucks. And so that's where that money comes from. In this case, the option buyer is made whole, all their losses are recuperated, that full $600, and the option seller, in this case, is the loser. They're the one who actually lost that $600. Now what if the opposite thing happened? What if I bought my 100 shares of American Airlines at a price of 16, I also bought this put option as protection, but over the course of the next month, American Airlines actually increased in price, and I was correct in my assumption. Well, in this case, if by the expiration date, if American Airlines is trading at, let's say, 20 bucks per share, then I won't need my stock insurance. I won't need to use this put option, right? Because if I bought my shares at 16 and I can sell them at a price of 20, that would be a profit of $4 per share times 100 shares. That's a profit of 400 bucks. And then, of course, you have to subtract the price of this contract, 138. So truly, in the end, I still walk away with a $262 profit. 400 minus 138 is 262. So yes, even though the option buyer in this case actually walked away with a profit, I would not say they're actually the winner in this situation. I would say the option seller in this case is actually the true winner. And that's because the option seller sold this contract to me for 138 bucks. So that money they get to keep. And then by the expiration, I have no need for the put option. So in that case, this option totally just expires worthless. It disappears. And so that $138 that I spent was actually for nothing. Yes, I had the protection. I did have the stock insurance in case the stock did actually decrease in price. But in this situation, I simply burned $138. And that option seller got to keep that $138 and just walk away. And so that's what I mean by there's always going to be a winner and a loser when it comes to trading options. It's either going to be the buyer of the option or the seller, depending on the actual situation or the outcome by the expiration date. But one of those two people is actually going to lose money. And so finally, before wrapping this video up, I do want to walk you through one last little example, because so far we've been dealing with this 16 strike put option, which as I said earlier, would allow us as the option buyer to recuperate every penny of our losses if the stock price actually decreased from 16. But what if you still wanted some protection, but you didn't want to pay the full $138 for it? In that case, you could still buy a put option, but choose a strike that is below $16 or below the price at which you actually bought those shares for. So for example, let's say now you bought the 15 strike put option. And you can see this option is trading for right around $88, so much less than the 16 strike put option. And so what this would allow you to do is cover all your losses, allow you to recuperate all your losses, but only those losses below $15 per share, right? Because now by the expiration date, I have the right or the option to sell my 100 shares at a price of $15 per share. So if I initially bought American Airlines at a price of 16, 
and let's say by the expiration date it dropped all the way down to 10, well, I could still sell my shares at a price of 15 because that's what this particular put option allows me to do. So if I bought at 16 and sold at 15, that means I lose $1 per share times 100 shares. That's a loss of $100, which is obviously still a much better outcome than not having this put option at all and having to sell those shares back at a price of only $10, the actual trading price in the market at the expiration date. And so this is one of the reasons why I love options because they are so flexible in terms of all the different choices you have with expiration dates and strike prices and whether you want to be the buyer or the seller. And you're able to really craft and customize a specific position in your portfolio exactly to your liking or exactly to your risk parameters or your risk tolerance. If you want absolute protection on any downside movement of the stock price, well, you can buy the 16 strike put. You're gonna have to pay a little bit more money, but that's just the give and take with this kind of thing. If you still want some protection, but you're willing to face a little bit of downside action, well, then you can choose a put option with a lower strike and obviously pay a lot less money to actually buy it. All right, so that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you are interested in taking a deep dive into options, options trading, and stock market investing, check out those Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll be publishing videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.